Hi, today we're going to talk about a performance guide to the Chaminade Concertino, but also how to play French music overall. Um, the Concertino um, is a favorite of mine. It's a bit overdone, but I still love it, and it's got some beautiful melodies. There are some basic principles we're going to talk about as we go through the piece that apply to a lot of French music that was written at the turn of the century. So here we go. So at the beginning, it's fairly self-explanatory and you want to have a good tone color. Now right there on that C sharp, in order to not have a big clunk with the fingers, I leave my first two fingers down. It makes the C sharp lower in pitch and also not so clunky. So without the two fingers, it's a little bit nicer. So there's a trick right there. Right there, again, you can leave your right hand down on the C sharp. I do add a breath here. Now right there, the A on the scale of our modern instruments tends to be low in pitch, so think a little bit higher when you get to that A. Likewise, on the B and the A, bring the pitch up just a little bit. And you'll notice that I lengthen that F sharp because that's the, the peak of the phrase, and it just makes it more dramatic to do that. Moving on, now, um, you have some grace notes coming up that's B to C sharp. Um, if you have a C sharp trill, great, you can just use this finger. But if you uh, have a normal flute without the C-sharp trill, you can use first trill key in the upper register, and then in the lower register, you have to use these two fingers. Now, I use my C-sharp trill then. That time, I use this for both octaves. That time I used first tool key in the upper octave and these two fingers in the lower octave. It's your choice. Now coming up, you have a group, you have a lot of 16th notes. And this is a basic principle that I've found in French music that if you have a lot of black notes, it's real easy to rush them, and I hear a lot of people do that. And I find that if you play something really clean but slower, it sounds more impressive. It sounds faster if it's clean. In order to get it clean, I like to group things in twos, because if you group them in twos, you're not going to leave out a note. Even if it's an odd number, let's say you have sevens coming up, I still group them in two. So you have three groups of two plus one. So, starting out, so I start out really super slow like that, and then gradually bring up the tempo, and you would be surprised how clean your technique's going to be when you start grouping them in twos rather than three plus four or something like that. Um, so just take your time with it, and really lengthen the notes that are at the bottom and the top and that makes it sound really Im uh, like it has a peak of the phrase and it has a drive. So you'll notice another thing about all of these fast notes is that it's the key 
of D major. So if you look at it as like, oh, this is just part of the D major scale, use your Tefanil Gobert EJ4. Use anything where you're practicing the D major scale and you're practicing it in a different way apart from the music so that will only enhance what you do with this music. Now it is Mark Stringendo getting a little bit faster, but it's also written into the music that it gets a little bit faster. So I would start out really super slow just to get it clean and then it sounds faster when it is clean. Okay, moving on to the B flat. Right there, I do add my B flat thumb. Now, in my music, I just write a plus where I have B flat thumb and a zero where I don't. That's my way of doing it. You can do whatever you want. Now, a word about C to D trills. Um, I see people making this mistake a lot. The C to D trill in the upper register is second trill key. In the lower register, it's first trill key. C sharp to D in the upper register's first trill key. C sharp to D in the lower register's first trill key. So second trill key for this C to D. about this group of fast notes. Same principles apply to these fast notes as, di as we did in the other fast notes. This is in the key of E flat major because we've got two flats in the key signature but they add an A flat. So practice your E flat major scale and then you have practiced this. Now at the end it's a little bit chromatic leading up to that B. Okay starting at the B you do have to take your B flat thumb off. And I recommend when you do take the B flat thumb off, look for like a C or something where you don't have the thumb on. So you can just do this rather than slide it. This is not a great technique. Sometimes you can do this, but really look for a C where you can write your zero to take it off. Okay, starting with the B. Now this is a little bit tricky with the rhythm. So I like to just think, here's the B. G, G, E, E, D, D. That's what I do. Just trying to land there on the B. On the D, I mean. Now a note about these triplets here. Um, the same principles apply even though they're written in threes. Sometimes I practice them in twos. Uh, you couldn't tell, but I was thinking in twos then. And sometimes when you have E to F sharp, you can use this middle F sharp. It's a little bit flat, but this is so fast, you won't be able to tell. Sometimes I find it's too quick, so my technique gets a little bit too fast there. So I, um, I tend to go back and forth on that. I add a breath here. Again there, I practice these in twos. And you can look at it right here. You've got a B minor scale on the first one. And then you have C major. So if you think scalar, that would help you. Now a big breath there, and then you have D major. Now a note about fingerings there. A lot of people like to use middle F sharp for the high register. I was going back and forth. I was using, sometimes I was using this, sometimes I was using middle F sharp. Uh, it helps with the intonation. And that final half note E, I would take my pinky off so it won't be so sharp. And think 
a little bit higher on the D so it's not so flat. Moving on to the Pew Animato. Here I do have my B flat thumb on so I have a plus in my music. Now right there, you notice my C didn't come out so well. So I do take my pinky up. You notice that time it came out a lot better. Now right there you have a B natural. So I did take my uh, B flat thumb off on the C sharp. So the next note I had the regular regular B. piano. A lot of times dynamics aren't necessarily a decibel level, but it's a different color. So think about colors. Colors can't really be taught. It's more of a conceptual thing. Uh, like what do you imagine here? Is that a lavender color? And then sometimes it just comes across. Now you'll notice in the trill that I started it really slow and then I increased the speed. That's a technique that a lot of people use. Um, it's pretty effective, I think. Now a note about that F trill, it is normally done on the thumb. Now here's an option that sometimes sounds better but it's hard to coordinate. You can use thumb 1, 3, 1, 3 and pinky, a fork to F fingering, and trill thumb and 1 but it's hard to coordinate. I don't use this one. But it does sound better than just using the thumb. Okay, going up. B flat thumb on. Now right there, it's really easy to crack notes after you've been playing really full force. So what I like to do, I like to really open up inside and maybe tongue a little bit further back so they don't crack. Now, it's, it's fairly easy just to play it normally, but I will tell you, a lot of people uh, don't know this, but there's a third way to finger B flat, and that's using this key right here. It's called the lever B flat or the chromatic B flat, and it's a little bit easier to use sometimes because it only moves this one key rather than a lot of keys like this. So if you want to use it, da da da, and then B flat like that. Sometimes it's very effective, and you can keep it down while you're playing other notes. So uh, look it up, it's called Lever B Flat. Okay, moving on to the next section where it says Dolce. Again, tone color. Let me mention a little bit about high B flat and high B natural. B flat should be fingered thumb, one first jewel key, no pinky and no first finger. Otherwise, it sounds like a harmonic. High B natural, fingered thumb, one, three, second jewel key, no pinky. Okay, moving on. after the low D. Now right there, I 
again when you go up to the A, try to keep the pitch high enough. Okay, moving on to the vivo tempo. Uh, this section needs to pra be practiced slowly, obviously. So I do use trill fingerings here for the C to D first trill key, and I use trill fingerings wherever I can. liver B flat on my chromatic again. Uh, now you'll notice that the accents there, I didn't really accent them as much as I did a tenuto. Uh, frequently accents are more tenuto. Accent happens at the beginning of the note, like, and tenuto is more in the middle of the note. You lean into it. And that's more what I think this means, uh, and that's what I how I played it. Okay, going on. Second troll key. And I did use lever B flat in all of that. It's up to you. Now here, um, in the typical French book, he has a breath after the C, uh, after the grace note. I find that's hard to do, so I just do it between the trill and the grace note. Now right there, that's a part where people tend to rush it and it doesn't come out quite clean. So practice that in twos even though it's written in threes. Um, so practicing it, it would sound like... there. I made some mistakes, but the third time I got it, so I just keep on doing it until you got it. Now, a word about a page turn here. In the typical French book, you have a page turn. I would not try to do it with the music as it is, so I would photocopy uh, one of these pages and just tape it to a page so you don't have to turn there, but you have time later to turn it when it, you have rest. So that's what I would do rather than trying to, you know, do it really fast. There's no time to do it. Now right there, people tend to look at this in twos. I would probably do, um, I would practice it in twos, but then I would think, and so to there, up to the G. So you have some sort of lead into that G, and this is a place that's really easy to make mistakes. So I would slur it too. So it makes it a little bit cleaner to do that. Again there, I would do an and so to there. Again, I used lever B flat there. second trill key, and I breathe before the grace note. Now, a word about this next section. The sevens, I hear people rushing these a lot, and um, I do practice them in twos. If you think about for two beats, there's 14 notes, so the twos would work out. If you want to think of them in sevens, it's three groups of two plus one. So practice it slowly. And there, 
part, I breathe after the E. That time I didn't because I started on the chromatic scale, but if you start with the sevens, you're going to need to do that. Okay, going on to the onomato. Now, I barely made that because I didn't take a dip, big enough breath, but I do add a breath after that C. And let me uh, add a note about these intervals here that are slurred. They're sometimes large intervals, so I would isolate them. Like, let's say the uh, D to the B. And then... Just making sure that it's clean. Okay, so going back to that phrase. vibrato here. Um, try to stay away from the pop singer vibrato on those uh, half notes. That's kind of pop singer vibrato where it's kind of you straight tone it and then use vibrato. Try to vibrate right at the beginning. sure the pitch is high enough. Now, a word about the cadenza. Uh, this is a very fun cadenza. At the beginning, I know this sounds strange, but since there's A sharps in the first passage that's in major, I use B flat thumb. It works. <laughs> trick that's really great. I do take my B flat thumb off on the C sharp, but on the C sharp I also try to get my pinky over on the low C sharp key because when you get to that high F sharp that's really hard to play soft, if you put down the low C sharp key it's really easy to play it soft. Likewise on the next high A it's really easy to play the high A with the low C sharp key soft. So going on you don't have your B-flat thumb down because now we're in minor and there is no A-sharp. I do add a breath here. these 16th, uh, well they're 32nd notes, uh, so I do practice them in twos. And then you can speed it up. And I do breathe after the fermata sometimes. Or after this note. There, it's first trill key again, and I started the trill slowly. 
Now, uh, going back, it the next section is just like it was at the beginning. But what you can do here is that you can change some tone colors to make it different in the way you do some of the fast notes. I'm not going to go over this section again, but you can um, decide what you want to do, you know, to make it different from the first section, but still similar. Okay, going on to the presto. Again, here I use B flat thumb for the A sharp, but then uh, take it off on the trill if you can get it over. Um, this is one where I do slide it. And I breathe before the two grace notes here. Now here they have two options. to the G-sharp trill, it's both trill, both trill keys. And the lower one, you have two ways of doing this. Uh, you can do it with B-flat thumb and wiggle the middle finger, or you can use the G-sharp and keep your finger on that lever B-flat and wiggle the middle finger. Either one is fine. book flute music by French composers this has an F sharp but it's still an F double sharp if you look at the piano score trills like I had done before where I started them slow so much because it's a really you know fast push to the end. Uh, some people on the next to last note will do a super high D. It's up to you. Um, I just did it like it's written. And make sure you have your embouchure, embouchure set for that low D uh, with the top lip down and you're not trying to push it too much. You're just focusing so that low D does come out. Um, you will notice after that high B on the next to last line that it's just a D major scale. So again, practice your Tappanel Gobert, your scale studies to make that super clean and work it in twos. Um, let's see. Also, between the trills, I left a little bit of space to really give that drive and accent to it just a little bit. So there you have it. Um, a performance guide to Cecile Chaminade's concertino, but also a performance guide on how to interpret French music from the turn of the century.